there are some seasons in life when circumstances and situations seem to drag us to despair and hopelessness. Have you been at that deplorable point in life when everything and everyone seem to be against you? To the point you begin to ask, whom have I offended? Sorry, you don't need to offend anyone necessarily for you to pass through or experience the hard realities of life. The book of Psalm, chapter 34, verse 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers him from them all. So, even the righteous are not spared from afflictions. In fact, sometimes they even have double portion, but the end is always glorious. The first reading from the book of Job, chapter 7, from verse 1 to 4, beginning again from verse 6 to 7, tells us the interesting story of a man who stands as the truest representation of suffering, the man Job. Recall that Job was a righteous man from the beginning of his narrative. In fact, God was profoundly proud of Job that he had to place a bet on him against the insinuations of Satan, who said that Job was righteous because God prospered him and also gave him protection. In the preceding narrative, we heard that suddenly Job lost everything he had in one day, including his children. Above all, his skin was infected. Job did not offend anyone. What was happening was that his faith was tried. His righteousness was placed on trial. The man Job passed through a horrifying experience, articulating his suffering in the passage you read this Sunday. He said that the human life is filled with drudgery and moments of torment that deprive him of happiness. My dear friends, in all his trials, Job remained confident in God. We read from Job chapter 19 verse 25 that he said, I know that my Redeemer liveth and in the end he will stand on the earth. After my skin have been destroyed, I will see God in the flesh. Job's confidence in God paid off. We read from Job chapter 42 verse 10 that the Lord restored the fortunes of Job twice as he had before when he prayed for his friends. Question, why did that happen after praying for his friends? What is the connection with his friends? We know that Job had three friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, who showed up at the beginning of his tribulation. They empathized with him. They even tore their ropes, put ash on themselves, sat on dust, and stayed with him for seven days and seven nights, as we see in Job chapter 2 from verse 11 to 13. But something happened. Instead of praying for Job, they accused him of some secret sins that caused his tribulations and they were even advising him to confess his sins. That was where they got it wrong and God was obviously angry with them as we see in Job 42 verse 7. Job intervened by praying for them. It was at the point of his supplication that God restored all his fortunes. The quick lesson here is that the way to deal with affliction is the way of prayer. The letter of St. James, chapter 5 from verse 16, confirms this when he said, Confess your sin to each other. Pray for each other that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. In the Gospel reading today from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1 from verse 29 to 39, we see the effective prayer of the righteous one, our Lord Jesus Christ, as he healed many who were sick, including the mother-in-law of Simon Peter. My dear friends, today we are invited to re-examine our approach to the sufferings and afflictions we face in life using the tool of prayer. Sometimes we presume that God knows our sufferings and our afflictions. Yes, he does, but he needs us to come to him. In prayer. Some other time we come to God complaining instead of praying. 
there is a big difference between supplication and complaint. For instance, we will begin to tell God, you know what I have passed through, I have suffered enough. That is not praying, it is complaining. There will be the need for us to earnestly apply the tool of prayer while waiting on the Lord when we are confronted by tribulations, trials and afflictions. The letter of James chapter 5 from verse 14 to 15 says, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up and anyone who committed sins will be forgiven. Moving forward, my dear friends, one thing we have to learn from the story of Job and his affliction and also from the numerous sick persons that our Lord Jesus Christ healed in the gospel, including the mother-in-law of Simon Peter, is that there is no situation in our life that qualifies to be a permanent resident. There is always an end to affliction. We only need to open up our hearts, just like Simon Peter opened up his house for the Lord to come in. We need to avail the Lord the opportunity to hold us, just as he held the mother-in-law of Simon Peter and raised her up. When you are down to nothing, Jesus is up to something. Do not lose hope. Trust in the Lord. Healing will come into your life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in our brokenness. We cannot help ourselves. True help comes from you. Look upon the sick and bring healing upon them. Look upon the afflicted and bring your resuscitating presence into their lives. Grant us the grace to stand firm even in the afflictions that may affect us in our lives. We know it, that you are there to help us, to raise us up again. We make our prayers to the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.